This is wonderfully delicious water. All day long, I have been exhausted from the heat. Right now, it's 43 degrees Celsius. That's about 113 degrees, degrees Fahrenheit. We have been traveling, seeing various closed churches, and the heat has been so intense that it has actually been difficult for me to function getting out of the car. And when I found this spring of water, I was just overjoyed. There's nothing so wonderful as water in a place that is so hot, so filled with stones, so dry. Even the wind itself just takes your breath away. You know, I was thinking to myself, there's a lot of stories in the Bible that are centered around water. In fact, one of my favorite ones is of Jesus meeting a lady at a well. Perhaps it was a little bit like this well. This well, or this water, is fed through this crack in the rocks. Can you see that crack where the water flows down to here? And this water is consistently here, even though 10 or 12 large basins of water are drawn out of it every day. <clears throat> Anyways, Jesus met a woman at the heat of the day, at noon, when nobody goes to a water well, because it's so hot, you could die from exposure. And he went there. It wasn't by accident. It was on purpose that he went there to meet that particular woman. And he asked her something special. He said, give me water. And when she said, well, why would you ask me? Jesus said, you're right. I'm the one who needs to give you water. Jesus needs to give us water. Why? Because the water he gives us is in us a spring that's so intensely under pressure, it can't help but flow out of us. We have to give that living water to somebody else. Have you experienced that in your life? I've experienced it. That's why I come to India year after year. And I want to see that the churches are reopened so that they can be centers of all water flowing out to the villages surrounding that church structure. It's my privilege to come to India to see these churches, to meet the villagers who are excited about meeting Jesus, the giver of everlasting water of life, eternal life. If you've not experienced that, I want to invite you to consider coming to India, being part of the work of reopening churches because it is profoundly rewarding. So please consider it. Wandanalu. When you break off a twig and it dies, can you ever make it live again? No. If a bird falls from the tree and dies, can that bird ever live again? No. When something dies, it dies. But that is not true when it comes in contact with the living God. The Bible is full of stories when Jesus touched something that was dead and it lived again. Jairus' daughter, the widow from Nain, whose son was uh, raised from the dead, and that's true too with a structure, a church in a beautiful community like this. When God's Spirit comes here again and there's friends that gather to revive it, it can live again. And that's the case with this beautiful church here that we're at, that we're attending this afternoon. It may look broken, it may look closed, it may look dead, but there's hope for this church. And one day soon we're gonna be back here and it's gonna be thriving. It's going to be beautiful because you made a difference. You sacrificed to make it live again. Thank you so very much. Last time I came to India, it was June. These fields had just been plowed and farmers were out here with their cattle and laborers planting cotton seeds. I was so fascinated by the process. A farmer gave me a seed to plant. I don't know which one of these plants was the one that I planted, but I'm just amazed to see the transformation. One seed created this plant here. And on this plant, there are at least 10 pods. When a pod bursts open, it creates
it creates this four sections in each section of fluff embedded inside are many seeds I feel one two three four five six seven seeds within this one fluff ball and there are four of them so each pod each flowering pod will make over 20 seeds think about it if one plant one seed makes one plant which has 10 pods on it and each has 20 seeds you can see the profound implication of planting one seed and that's what we have to do here in India the need is so great one person can't do all of the evangelism necessary in this great country but each one of us can be like that one seed we can be willing to be planted in the soil and have a, a harvest of many many fold 200 fold what an amazing amazing privilege and I want to invite you to be one of the seeds that God plants in India.